Today's story is titled, Just a Lucky So-and-So, the story of Louis Armstrong. And again, we're still reading books that center around Black History Month. In New Orleans, Louisiana, in a part of town outside of Storyville, tucked in a corner called Baco Town, in a section nicknamed the Battlefield, little Louis Armstrong was born, black and poor and lucky. My whole life has been happiness. On the corner of Perdido and Liberty, little Louis lived in a one room with no lights and no running water. But it was home to him and his sister, Mama Lucy, and his mama, May Ann. The grandson of slaves, little Louis totted laundry, hauled coal, sold the newspapers, and scavenged through garbage to earn money for his family. On the streets, little Louis sometimes made his own trouble, but it was nothing his mama's sharp tongue and a switch from the china berry tree in Grandma Josephine's yard couldn't fix. I say never worry what the other fellas has as long as you're having fun in your own way. Every day outside his window, little Louis listened up and down the streets to the music of brass, bands, funeral marches, honky-tonks on Saturday nights, church services on Sunday mornings. Across the street, he peeked through the cracks of Funky Butt Hall. On cornet, the sassy ragtime music of Bunk Johnson, Buddy Bolden, and Joe Oliver followed him wherever he went. Johnson had tone, Bolden blew hard. But for little Louie, it was King Oliver who would outblow, outperform any horn player in all New Orleans. The king of all musicians was Joe Oliver. School learning at the fifth school for boys began for little Louis at seven. Before school and after, on the Carnapskai's wagon next to Morris, little Louis totted a tin horn, penny for your rags, and bleated nickel for your scraps. Although I could not play a good tune, Morris applauded me just the same. Through the window of a pawn shop, a cornet caught Louis's eye. A $5 loan for Morris bought the cornet for Louis. Some brass polish and oil brought the horn to life. Down Rampart Street, four boys harmonized my Brazilian beauty. Little Mac on drums, Big Nose Sydney on bass, Redhead Happy Bolton on baritone, and the gravely tenor of Little Louis. The boy with the smile so wide, open kids called him Satchel Mouth. New Year's Eve in New Orleans was all music, fireworks, and midnight shots fired in celebration. Little Louis joined in with his stepfather's guns. Gun. All his scrapes with the law ladded up, added up. At 11 years, Little Louis was sent away. I thought the world was coming to an end. At the Colored Waves home for boys, little Louis could barely eat. He missed his mama, his sister, and his cornet. Through his open window, windows drifted the call of the bulge. A bulge to rise, a bulge for chores, a bulge for bed. The band leader, Mr. Davis, told little Louis that boys from the battlefield don't belong in a band. Little Louis sang solos for everyone to hear. Mr. Davis listened and started, and started Louis with the tambourine. Then he played the drums. Mr. Davis made him the bulger. Then he put him on the cornet. Mr. Davis made him the band leader. Me and music got married at home. The band traveled to play in every corner of New Orleans, uptown and downtown, West End, Spanish Fort, and Front Old Town. But for little Louie, there was nothing like walking through his old neighborhood at the head of the band blowing home sweet home. Listening to the streets was everyone, 
He knew, and right up front was his mama Mayan. I could not think of anything but my good luck. At 14, little Louis returned to his Perdido Street, not so little. By then he could make any song swing. Louis needed to hear a song just once and it was his. He worked all day hauling coal and all night playing in honky tonks around town. Louis met Joe as Joe paraded through town with the onward braced band and followed him everywhere. Louis ran Joe's errands, carrying his horn, but in between times, Joe taught Louis note by note. In Joe's home, Louis filled, filled up on rice and beans and music lessons. Louis traded in his first pawn shop cornet for Joe's used one. I priced that horn and guarded it with my life. Louis listened to Joe's horn, crow like a rooster, growl like a lion, cry like a newborn baby. Two horns side by side so close, Louis called him Papa Joe. Aboard the SS Sydney, he blew sling, waltzes, and dance tunes all up and down the banks of the Mississippi River. On land, Louis blew with the tuxedo brace, brass band, and then Kid Ori's hottest jazz band in town, featuring Baby Dots, Pops, Fas Pops Foster, and his Papa Joe Oliver. When I pick up that horn, that's all. The world's behind me, and I don't concentrate on nothing but it. I love them notes. After a time, New Orleans talking tonks weren't too small for the king. Joe hopped on a, were too small for the king. Joe hopped a train and blew goodbye to New Orleans. Chicago was waiting. Louis stepped in when Joe stepped out. His horn had folks talking about the little boy from the battlefield. Night after night, Louis filled up the halls, filled up the streets, filled up his pockets with the music from his cornet. Four years later, Joe sent a telegram. Louis was ready to leave. He sent for me and whatever he's doing, I want to do it with him. All aboard, Louis stood on the train platform, finished sandwich in one hand, cornet in the other. Worried he'd catch cold in the windy city, his mama made him wear long johns in the August heat. Joe Oliver and Chicago were reading. On the south side of Chicago at the corner of 31st and Cottage Grove, Louis peeked into Lincoln Gardens dance hall. A globe glittered from the ceiling. A balcony looked out over the dance floor. Joe and King Oliver's Creole jazz band warmed up. I'd never seen a city that big. Opening night always makes you feel as though the little butterflies were running around in your stomach. Louis' tuxedo was pressed and patched and small. He walked to the bandstand where Baby and John, Johnny Dots, Lil Hardin, Honro Dutri, and Bill Johnson waited. From the very first note they knew, he played quietly behind Joe, softly in back of Joe, echoing after Joe. Someone yelled, let that youngster blow. And Louis stepped forward and stood in front of Joe and blew. My, bo my boyhood dreams had come true at last. Louis stood in front of bands in Chicago, New York, California, and Europe, on records in Hollywood, on Broadway, and on the radio. The little boy from New Orleans, Louisiana, from a part of town outside of Storyville, in a corner called Faco Town, in a section nicknamed the Battlefield, was just a lucky so-and-so. I was so happy, I did not know what to do. I had hit the big game, the big time. The end.